In this video, we will review some basics of auto-peep, with a particular focus on the implications of ineffective trigger and how it can be managed. The recognition and management of intrinsic peep, also referred to as auto-peep or occult peep, are critical skills for providers caring for mechanically ventilated patients. Intrinsic peep occurs when the time for exhalation is shorter than the time needed to fully exhale, resulting in progressive trapping of air in the lungs with each subsequent breath. This phenomenon, also called dynamic hyperinflation, causes increased intrathoracic volume and pressure, which may lead to decreased venous return to the right side of the heart, eventual hemodynamic compromise, and ultimately death if not recognized and treated in a timely manner. Obstructive lung diseases, such as COPD and asthma, predispose patients to development of intrinsic PEEP. Auto-PEEP can be directly measured by performing an expiratory hold maneuver on the ventilator, which occludes flow through the ventilator circuit and thus equilibrates pressure between the patient's alveoli and the ventilator pressure gauge. There are also several indirect ways to assess for auto-PEEP such as observing the expiratory flow curve for its return to the baseline prior to initiation of the next inspiration, qualitative evaluation of symmetry under the areas under the flow time curves, and recognition of ineffective trigger. Inability to trigger the ventilator in the setting of intrinsic PEEP is a common problem in mechanically ventilated patients that results in tremendous work for the patient and may lead to fatigue and sometimes eventual ventilator weaning failure. Alternatively, ineffective triggering can lead to patient agitation, which is sometimes treated with additional sedation, which may then prolong mechanical ventilation if not recognized as such. In this video, we will demonstrate the impact of intrinsic PEEP on the patient's ability to trigger the ventilator and explain how the theory of increasing extrinsic PEEP may facilitate patient triggering to relieve excess work fatigue, and agitation. In this demonstration, our heights represent pressure. So say I'm the ventilator. My height kneeling right now represents the ventilator pressure. My friend's height, while also kneeling, represents the patient's plateau pressure, which is also alveolar pressure. So at the end of exhalation, my pressure is PEEP, and her pressure should also be PEEP as long as there is no auto PEEP and she has fully exhaled. Let's say we have a PEEP of five centimeters of water in this example. In a typical passive patient without auto PEEP, during inspiration, the pressure rises in the ventilator. So I'm going to stand up to demonstrate that there is now a high pressure in the ventilator. So there is a delta P or pressure differential. Therefore, flow is going to go into the patient. So my friend is going to stand up as tall as me. Now that we are of the same pressure at the end of inspiration, there is no more flow and inspiration has ended. Then during exhalation, I as the ventilator am going to go back down to PEEP. So flow will go out of the patient through exhalation due to the pressure differential. And my friend is going to kneel back down to the same level as me. So we are going to both be back to PEEP at the end of exhalation. Because our delta P is zero, there is no flow at the end of expiration. This is in contrast to a situation with auto PEEP, where there would remain a delta P, which would manifest as persistent and expiratory flow, which may be visible in the ventilator waveforms. Now say she wants to initiate a breath and the pressure trigger is set at minus two centimeters of water. Thus, as the patient, she has to duck to three centimeters of water so that I, as the ventilator, know that she wants to take a breath. So when I stand up in response, there is a delta P again, and flow will go into the patient. So she stands up to my level and the pressures equilibrate again at the end of the inspiratory portion of the breath. Then during exhalation, I will kneel back down again, back to peep, and she will also get to kneel back down again. That's how it works when she's trying to trigger. However, with auto peep, what's different is that the patient starts the inspiration at a higher pressure. So my friend will stand up on a chair to demonstrate a large amount of auto peep. In this example, her total peep is 20, and since our sent peep is five, her auto peep is 15. Now, if she wants to trigger a breath with a pressure trigger of minus two centimeters of water, 
she has to bend all the way back down to three centimeters of water, which takes a lot of work, which means the patient is at risk of fatigue. At some point, this effort might be too great for the patient, who may make some of the effort but not effectively be able to trigger the breath, hence leading to the phenomenon of ineffective trigger. The deflections in this pressure and flow waveform correspond to inadequate effort and excess work made by the patient who is unable to overcome the large delta P created by the intrinsic PEEP. This is a subtle sign that reflects significant underlying pathology. How might we make it easier for her to breathe? If my friend stands back up on the chair to demonstrate the same amount of auto PEEP, and I also stand up to simulate the increasing external PEEP to 10, she still has to work to bend down to drop her pressure at the beginning of inspiration to two centimeters of water less than my set extrinsic PEEP, but she does not have to bend as much and work quite as hard now that there is less of a pressure differential. Recognition of intrinsic PEEP is an important and necessary skill for minimizing ventilator-associated lung injury and hemodynamic complications of mechanical ventilation as well as for reducing iatrogenically induced fatigue and agitation. Once the presence of auto PEEP is recognized, it is important to quickly assess and mitigate the hemodynamic effects, done most effectively by decreasing the respiratory rate to allow adequate time for exhalation, treat the underlying causes, commonly done with bronchodilators and steroids, and consider additional management of ineffective trigger by increasing extrinsic PEEP. While increasing the set PEEP does not actually decrease auto PEEP the way treating obstruction or lengthening the expiratory time does, it may make it easier for the patient to trigger the breath, in turn relieving patient agitation and fatigue, and hopefully limiting additional iatrogenic ventilator-associated complications.